Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the WattCycle 280 amp hour mini battery. So this is a 12 volt battery. So you've got somewhere around 3,500, 3,584 watt hours in this battery. It's lithium iron phosphate chemistry, and you do have over current protection, undercurrent protection. This has over temperature protection. It also has low temp protection as well. This is the mini version. You guys can see it right there. Plus it has a Bluetooth. Speaking of the last battery, let me get that. It's kind of broken up looking, but at least you guys can see what the 100 amp hour mini looks like. There we go. So this is essentially three of these. So you're just shy of having three of these batteries in this one battery. And for those people that are running off of 12 volt systems, if they've got something in a van or something like that, I would definitely go for the largest capacity. So amp hour battery you can get in your voltage. I've tested a 460 amp hour battery as well. So yeah, something like that. Some, some of these larger batteries would be better. If you've got some kind of really small build that you need to do, then the minis make sense. You can also put these in series. I mentioned this in basically every video I do on 12 volt batteries. I don't recommend that. I recommend just going ahead and getting a 24 volt or 48 volt battery. Reason being, I just don't like the fact that you would have to put an external balancer to keep everything in line. Even though they are designed where you can put them up to 48 volts, so four in series, yeah, I prefer to get a 48 volt battery instead. So we'll do the standard tests on this battery. I expect pretty good things from WattCycle. I've seen some of their builds in the past. I broke this apart. It actually looked really nice. So for the price, WattCycle is pretty tough to beat. So I'm anxious to look inside this battery and check out and see what they've done with it. I'll also see if I can get this in the freezer. I don't think it's going to fit into the little freezer I've been using for other batteries like this one, but I do prefer the freezer method because I can check the temperature of the cells, put it in more of a real environment, a cold environment, rather than just dip the sensor in some cold water. So yeah, I'll do the low temp protection, and then we'll also check the capacity, of course, see what we can get out of these 280 amp hour cells. So typically, I think these are EVE cells. I think they have it advertised at that. So the EVE 280 amp hour cells, you can usually pull a lot of amp hours out of those cells. So we may even be able to squeeze 300 amp hours out of these 280 amp hour cells. And as far as longevity is concerned, these 280 amp hours, assuming they are EVE cells, they've got a really good reputation as far as longevity, yeah, for long life. All right, well, I'm gonna jump right into it. We'll do the capacity test first and then go from there. And for the capacity test, a lot of times I'll use heat lamps like you see on the right. They make a really good resistive load. And right at a 0.2 C rate, we got 301 amp hours and some change. So yeah, as predicted, they did really well, these cells. So yeah, definitely above capacity. All right, I got it out of the freezer. We should be at 25, 26 degrees, something like that. So it's not super chilled like I've done some other batteries, but it should be plenty cold enough to stop charging. So you've got the green light right here, and that should turn red briefly until it realizes it's cold, the BMS will shut charging off. So let's see here. There we go. So it is disconnected. I'll check the app also. It should show that the charging is shut off. So let's check it out. Yeah, you can see on the left that charging is disabled. And actually when I scroll through, if I look at the alarm that it's showing right there, if we look at the alarm, it shows an um, under temperature protection or under temperature charging protection, something like that. So, yep, it does work on this battery. All right, I just took this nut off on the positive to be able to get the lid off. All right, so lid off, looking at the top here, this is one reason I like Watt Cycle. They did this in their mini battery also. They have metal on the sides, not only to bind the cells, but they also leave these up here on the top, part of the metal with some foam padding on them. And those protect the lid from crushing in. It provides spacers for the BMS. On the negative side, we have three six gauge, 200 degrees Celsius wires. The positive over here, so the main positive, is four 8-gauge 200 degrees Celsius wires. It's kind of odd, really, and this kind of distance didn't really have to bunch the wire up a bunch. It seems to me like they could have used 
a higher gauge wire and skipped having multiple stranded wires like that, especially with, these are very flexible and even like down to the two gauge are extremely flexible. I don't know, I guess they had their reasons for that. Before I remove the positive, they did have all the standard white goop all over it. So after it was torqued down, they spread it on all the connections also. And you can see it here on all of these. I'm not sure that it's gonna be doing much on these connections right here. I haven't checked the temperature sensors yet on the app for this battery. I do see two underneath right here, underneath this white goop on the right. So they're both on the same cell. So they may have a different sensor for the high and one for the low. It depends on how the BMS does it. In order to see what cells they're using, I'm gonna have to get down past the BMS right here because they've got this protective shielding over the cells. And it looks like, yeah, if I get this foam off of here, then there's a screw down below because they've actually got a bar, a stabilizer in between that the BMS is mounted to. So I'll get the BMS off and then get that bar off. Then we should be able to see the cells. Yep, they do look like Eve cells. All right, let me get a reading on the barcode and then we can check it out. All right, so they are Eve 280 amp hour cells. For some reason, it's trying to show the production date, but it says my code's wrong, but all I did was scan the cell. So I don't know what's going on with that. So build quality wise, there's not a lot to pick on here. I do like the metal sides, like I mentioned. I would prefer shielding on a lot of these wire leads here. So they're coming from different sides. It would take a lot of effort, I'm sure, to be able to shield them in some type of tubing, but I would prefer that. With the spacers, there's not a lot of chance for any kind of frays or damage because they're short runs, but it still would be nice to see in here. On the BMS itself, all there is is the barcode on the top. There's no numbers, no readings anywhere else to be able to identify anything on the BMS. This is nice, really. You've got these bars providing tension, and then this gives space off of the sides of the battery. So simple, but very effective, so that you have the spacer. These are actually spacers for the cells on that side, and you've got protection on the bottom and top. Yeah, man, Watt Cycle doesn't mess around. They've got simple builds that work. So I really like how they do things. All right, so the battery did great. That's pretty much what I've come to expect from Watt Cycle. That's why I've mentioned multiple times, it's tough to beat them for the price. Also, I've talked to some other people that have had to warranty some of their batteries, and basically they emailed in and WattCycle emailed them uh, and let them know, we're sending you new batteries right away. So it wasn't really a hassle for them. So if you guys have had any experiences, whether good or bad, you can let me know in the comments. And I'll try to put it here in the video. My dump trailer, actually the battery in it was a lead acid. It uh, wouldn't work, so I couldn't dump it. I had some gravel. I was trying to get another project done. So I ended up getting the Watt Cycle mini battery and putting it in my dump trailer. And it was like the little battery that could. So it's pulling 150 amps or something like that to be able to lift the dump trailer and it was doing it fine. The only thing is the battery is just so teeny tiny. I probably should just put two in there so it can pull off of both of them because it's so small, it can't even fill the space of the lead acid battery. So I'm gonna have to strap it down some way. But yeah, pretty impressive little battery. So as far as this battery is concerned, I didn't really have any complaints other than the app. They had another kind of generic app before when I tested the mini battery and they have their own app now and it just stinks. Like there, you can't see the individual voltage and it has trouble connecting sometimes. Sometimes it can't even find the battery. Most of the time it could, but twice. So I checked to see whether or not it was the fact that my Bluetooth was on. I've had some issues like that with some other cheap apps uh, where you have to shut your Bluetooth off and turn it back on to be able to get it to work, but it didn't seem to be the issue. Anyway, WattCycle asked if I had any issues and I emailed them that and they said they're working on it. They're gonna be updating the app at some point. So yeah, other than that, I didn't have any issue with the battery at all. And the app does work, you know, it's just, it definitely could use some refinement. Honestly, I don't really know what goes into making those apps, but just some batteries do better. Like that Cyclone Bat battery that I reviewed last time, so a couple weeks back, something like that. 
didn't the battery needed some work, but the app was actually not bad at all. So I don't really know what goes into making it, how much work it is to get an app. But to me, they really should, uh, yeah, definitely fine tune this app. Other than that, though, the build quality is great, tested well above capacity. I don't even know if I showed it before, but the two terminals, they kind of go above and beyond with some stuff. But the two terminals on the bottom of here, so as they're inside the case there, they even have plastic covers on those. So I can't picture that making contact with anything on the bottom end because they have foam and stuff. But yeah, they, they do, they put some extra touches in there, I guess I should say. Also, that seems to be a standard for Watt Cycle to have those two, like they, they have that metal cage around it and they carry it up further to keep it stabilized on the top. So there was some foam here. So it's not gonna shift upwards or sideways. And really that's what that cycling bat battery needed because the thing was just clunking, clunking around and um, it would lift upwards, I think. So yeah, unless they're gonna jam foam and stuff up there, which I really don't like, that's a good idea. You have those two uh, metal brackets right here. That way you can still have space above everything. The BMS isn't gonna get hot. There's space above it, but it's still not gonna lift up. So it's actually a really good idea. Also, the handles are not attached to the lid. I like that. Different designs do different things, but yeah, I like when the handles are on the bottom case. So when I rip it apart, like this one here, uh, like it was another one recently. I don't know which one it was or some, one of them I was looking at. After I broke it apart, I grabbed the handle, lift it up, and the entire lid came off. All the wires were stretched, all that. Now, everyone's not going to be taking the lid off, but I don't have to, I don't like to have to depend on just the glue you've put around the base if the lids, if you've got straps up here on the lid, I don't think that's a good idea. So having it on the base is a good idea. All right, guys, so that's about it. That's all I can think of. I will have a link for this battery in the description. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.